is Leah. I am a librarian here at the Fairfield County District Library. Thank you for joining us tonight as we talk about bullet journaling. Um, I'm gonna just hang out here for a minute and talk so we give people a chance to join us. Um, thank you if you are <laughs> joining us live. I know that there's a lot going on tonight, so a lot of other things to, uh, uh, to, to interest you. So if you're joining us live, welcome. Um, again, my name is Leah, and I work here at the main library in Lancaster, so if you've got any questions, you need to get in touch with me, you know where to find me. Okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about bullet journaling. Um, a lot of people ask, what is bullet journaling? It's, um, well, it's a method of organization created by Ryder Carroll. Um, he's got this book, The Bullet Journal Method. Um, I recommend it if you're interested. It's, he says it's a way to track the past, order the present, and design the future. I like to think of bullet journaling as a planner, a diary, a scrapbook, a to-do list, um, a mindfulness practice, and like an into mental inventory all rolled into one, <laughs> one notebook, um, which sounds like a lot for a notebook to handle but it's, it's really like the best way for uh, a lot of people, myself included, to keep ourselves organized and remember everything that we have going on and all the things that we want to do. Um, one of the interesting, th interesting things and I think confusing things for bullet journals is you build it as you go. Um, so it's unlike a planner and like you open up a planner, you've got the whole year laid out. Um, bullet journals don't aren't organized that way. Um, instead, they they usually have some sort of future log for future planning. Um, but when you get down to like the nitty gritty, um, that is something that you build as you go. So um, here's this week in my bullet journal. Here's next week. I got nothing. It's blank <laughs> because it's one of those things that. Um, as you're going, you, you organize it. There's lots of people out there who do bullet journaling lots of different ways. Um, there is no correct way to bullet journal. I'm just going to put that out there first. Um, the traditional method of bullet journaling, the, the Ryder Carroll method, is a very, very minimalist method. He uses a notebook and a pen. Um, any kind of notebook will do. You, you know, wire-bound spiral notebook that you carried in high school, one of those will work. Um, there are lots of specially designed notebooks for bullet journaling. Um, you don't have to use one of those. Lots of people, myself included, really like the dot grid paper. Um, you probably can't see that, but there are tiny dots on the, the page. Um, it just, it allows you to build the page the way you want it. Um, but other people use lined, lined pages or grid paper. Whatever works for you, that's what you want to go with. Um, bullet journaling is a very, very individual um, practice. So you will do whatever works for you. And it's also one of those things that... Um, because you, you can do it as you go, it's one of those things that you can put down and pick up at any time. So it's January 6th, it's not the beginning of the, the month, it's not even the beginning of the week. Is it okay to start a bullet journal today? Absolutely. Um, I have been bullet journaling this, I've done it for two years, this is my third year bullet journaling. Um, and in that time I have, probably skipped about four weeks total where I didn't bullet journal. Um, and either, no, no, that, that's a lie. There was, <laughs> there was four weeks when I sporadically didn't bullet journal. There was like a six week period there this year um, <laughs> between mid-March and May where I was just, I threw my hands up and I quit because I didn't know what was happening any <laughs> at all. But I think um, all of us were a little confused um, right there mid-March when the world fell apart, but um, yeah, we'll move on from that. But um, but yeah, so a lot of people, they'll look at bullet journaling and be like, oh, that's a 
lot of stuff, but really it's not. You need a notebook and a pen. That's all you need to bullet journal. If you start looking at pictures of bullet journals online, you'll notice that they can be very, very intimidating. Um, there are lots of very artistic people out there who turn their bullet journals into works of art. Um, I'm very jealous of them. <laughs> I cannot draw to save my life. So that is something that is beyond me. Um, but if you wanted to experiment and get a little more creative with your bullet journal, um, you might want to pick up some markers, some more pens. Um, I recommend a ruler, um, a pencil, and an eraser. Because if you're going to start making interesting designs, I like to lay it down in pencil first to see how it looks. Um, and then do it, go over it with marker and then erase my pencil lines. Um, if you wanted to get even more creative, you could um, get some stickers. I'm a big fan of stickers. I love stickers. They're like my favorite thing. Um, and washi tape. <laughs> washi tape is actually my favorite, favorite thing. Um, I, I, I have washi tape in every color and shape and size, and it's a little bit ridiculous how much washi tape I have. I do consider collecting crafting supplies a hobby. Um, <laughs> so I'm not just a bullet journaler, I'm a craft supply collector. Um, so, and um, markers and pens and more markers and more pens and um, yeah, there are lots of people who will paint in their bullet journals and do lots of watercolor work. I am not artistic in that way, so I do not. But people people can turn their, their bullet journals into, like I said, amazing works of art, but don't let that intimidate you. You do not have to do that with your bullet journal. Um, so when you start bullet journaling, people want to know where to start. Um, Basically, um, you want to develop a key. You see here, I've got a, a key. The key is the system that you lay out to designate when you like put your things in your lists, um, what that, that is. Is it some task you have to complete? You'll use a symbol to indicate it's a task. Is it a meeting you have to go to? Um, is it something that you finished? What does it look like when you finished? So you kind of lay out the key um, and there are lots of different methods for doing keys and people develop their own symbols for what they like. Um, Ryder, yes, there's a question. Um, do you want to talk about what the difference is between this and a day planner? Um, yeah, day planners, um, they have, sorry, I'm taking questions as they come on Facebook Live. Day planners have like your, the whole year kind of laid out. Um, they have you like a lot of times like designated hours and then you flip the page and it's the next day. Well, with a bullet journal, you don't have that. You flip the page and you've got a blank page. So if I'm, you know, I have a trip coming up and I've got that on my mind and I'm like, oh, you know, I need to start my packing list. I can turn my page in my bullet journal and start my packing list. I don't have to find another scrap of paper somewhere and start a packing list and then keep track of that piece of paper wherever I've put it or the list on my phone that I forget to look at. Um, it's just the next page in my bullet journal. If I've got, you know, I've been having a really, a lot of times for me, um, I use my bullet journal as kind of like, a, I use it as a journal, a diary. You know, if I've got something that's been on my mind that I need to like work out, I will flip the page and I'll start writing about it. I'll start um, putting my thoughts ink to paper, getting them out, and then seeing what's going on in my mind. It's like, okay, what steps do I need to take to deal with this? How do I conquer this problem? What's, what do I do next? Whereas with a day planner, you turn the page and it's a new day. Um, there's, there's no room for, it's okay, Mary, you don't have to get it. <laughs> there's, there's no room for that, that planning and that thinking outside of just what tomorrow is. So that's one of the, the big differences with the bullet journal is it, because you're building it as you go, um, you're, you're making it whatever you need it to be. Um, I went on vacation and I took a, my, my bullet journal with me 
and you know, I didn't have anything I had to do while I was on vacation, but it gave me room to write down, you know, memories from, from that trip and what, what we did on different days, you know, the days we, <laughs> ouch, got a sunburn or when we went into Savannah to, um, and had tea at the, the, the tea, the tea place. So, you know, it, it, it gives you room to, to do whatever it is you want to do with your bullet journal. That's one of the things that I love about bullet journaling. Are there any other questions? Okay. So, um, a lot of times you, you create that, that, that key. And I have found that my key has changed over time. Um, I thought I might need uh, lots of different symbols for things. I, I don't. I have like three basic symbols. Um, and these are just what I use because it's what I think. Um, I, I, I use a square when I have, there's a task that I have to do. Um, Ryder Carroll, he likes to use a dot. Um, I get a lot of satisfaction from putting a check mark when I have finished something. So for me, I like that check mark. So I want a box that I can put a check mark in. Um, when I have a meeting or an appointment that I've got to go to, I'll put a little circle. Um, when I have an event, um, for me, so that's something like this program. Um, I'll usually make that a little triangle because it just, it looks different. So it draws my attention and it lets me know, oh, I need to focus on that. Um, and then if I've just got a note that I'm jotting down, like something I want to remember, I'll just put a little dash line and then write whatever it is. It's, there's no action that I need to take. So it's just a line. Um, I'll put exclamation points next to things that are important. And if I've written down a task for myself that I then decide, oh, I don't need to do that, or it got canceled, I draw a line through it. And if it's something that I reschedule, I put an arrow in the box. So it's, it's a very simple key that I have designed for myself. Um, most of it taken from Ryder Carroll's method, but again, I've adjusted it to the way I like to do it. Um, and then you need to start, um, he, you, you have your future log. Now, the way Ryder Carroll does it, he just writes the name of the month at the top, um, and then the numbers one through, usually one through 31 or one through 28 if it's February, um, just the days, whatever, however many numbers there are that month, he writes those down the side, and then the letter for the day of the week, and then leaves himself room to write events that are going to happen. Um, I don't do that. I lie, because I, I do it a little bit. But for me, I want um, a calendar view. Like when I'm planning things, I really like that calendar view. I want to be able to see the month laid out. I want to see what week is what, um, especially because I'm planning things for the library and events and I need to know when it's happening. And so for me, I think in a calendar view when I'm planning. So I will draw a calendar. Um, and there are lots of bullet journalers out there who will draw their calendar Monday through Sunday, which to me just is wrong. Um, it needs to be a, <laughs> a Sunday through Saturday calendar. So, um, yeah, sometimes I look at bullet journals, I'm like, that's not what that month is shaped like, but um, they're, they're doing a, a, a different calendar layout. I expect this bullet journal to last me six months. I've, I've discovered that they usually last between six to eight months for me. So I'm gonna plan on six months in this bullet journal and then I'll have another journal that will take me through the rest of the year. So I went ahead and I laid out the next few months in the calendar view in this journal. And then after, I made seven months just in case, because I, when I'm in that last month, I'm still planning for the next month, so I need space to write down what's happening there. And then after that, I've gone and done the more traditional um, bullet journal future log layout that Ryder Carroll recommends. Um, I draw myself the calendar at the top, because again, I'm one of those people, I need the calendar view. I need to see what day of the week it falls on. I do write the letter of the, the week beside the number. And I also highlight my weekend. So it, it gives me like, this is the Monday through Friday block. I can see it as a week a little bit better that way. 
Um, it's not, it's not necessary that you do that, but for me that helps visualize the week. Um, and then I like, I, I like pretty. So I, I throw in some color and some stickers. Um, Ryder Carroll uses a black pen and notebook and nothing else, but I like pretty. So, um, so your future log, and this is where you do planning for things that are coming up in the future. You know, um, I give myself the whole year because sometimes, especially here at work when I'm planning programs months in advance, um, I need to, I need, I need the whole year to start with. Even though I know this journal isn't going to last me that long, I've gone ahead and given myself the whole year. And then I've left some room for 2022 because I know when I go to the eye doctor in April, she's going to schedule my, my appointment for um, 2022. So I need a place to write that down. So I've, I've created that space in my bullet journal for those things that are coming way in the future. Um, but um, so then you have your future log. Once you um, create your future log, most people will create weeklies. Some people don't do weeklies, they just do dailies. Um, a weekly log is, oh, let me get, let me get to one. It's a look at the current week or the upcoming week. Um, and it just gives you place to write those tasks and events and appointments the things that you need to do in the coming week. Um, Ryder Carroll doesn't do that. He, he kind of skips the weekly logs and just does dailies. And he will take as much room as he needs for that day. And then he will draw a line, start the next day. Um, I, and I do that sometimes. Like when I went on vacation, I didn't give myself any predetermined amount of space. I knew I was gonna have days where I just had a little bit to write and days where I had more to write. So um, that's what I did. I just drew a line and started the next day when that day arrived. Both work. Um, but I have found that for, t for me, typically during a week where I'm at work, I need about that much room to write out the tasks that I've got to complete during the day um, and or appointments that I have. So I will leave myself just a little bit of space for those things that have to be done on specific days. And then I keep a running to-do list of things that need to be done, um, and it, that it doesn't matter when they get finished. Um, well, it matters when they get finished, but it doesn't have to be Tuesday or Wednesday. It could be Thursday. You know, it's just it, as long as it's done sometime that week, I, I just jot that down and um, don't assign that task to a specific day. <clears throat> Are there any other questions yet, Mary? No, nope, no other questions. There are lots and lots of places to get ideas and inspiration for your bullet journal. Um, some of the places that I like to go, um, books, um, like I said, Ryder Carroll has got this book. We have it in book form. Um, it's also available as an ebook in our Overdrive collection. Another book that I really like, actually, I think I've read this book twice now. Um, it's called Dot Journaling, A Practical Guide, How to Start and Keep the Planner, To-Do List, and Diary that'll actually help you get your life together by Rachel Wilkerson Miller. Um, this book we have in book format and as an ebook in both the Overdrive collection and the Hoopla collection. I will say right now, both of these books are checked out in Overdrive, so you would have to go on a waiting list. Um, this one is available in Hoopla, so it's available all the time. So you could check it out and um, and read it tonight if you like. Um, but it's got lots of sample layouts. So it's, it's a very quick read because there are lots of pictures in here. Um, I think it's a really great book and it does a whole lot of explaining of like how the system works and how you can adapt it to your needs. Um, and people will use bullet journals in lots of different ways. Um, a lot of people keep um, reading bullet journals where they keep track of the books that they're reading, books that they want to read. Um, some people will do food logs where they keep track of like the food that they're eating or the exercises that they're doing. They, they keep um, their bullet journals. It, it, it's about 
you know, their health. Um, a lot of people, when you're, when you're keeping a bullet journal, a lot of people you'll find will do um, like habit trackers or monthly trackers where they keep track of certain things. Um, a lot of people will keep track of, um, you know, are they drinking enough water? Or are they taking their meds? Or like, I know people with health conditions keep track of, you know, how they're feeling certain days or what symptoms they're having certain days. So they can keep track of just how they're doing. So they've got that information then when, when they go to their doctor and they can look at their bullet journal and say, you know what, I had eight headaches last month. I think that's a little too much. Can we do something about it? So you can use your bullet journal and for anything you can think of, you can use your bullet journal for that. Um, I have a lot of friends who keep track of like the shows they're watching. Like, ooh, there are eight seasons of this show and there are 22 episodes per season. How many, and they'll keep a countdown of like what they've watched and how many they still have to go. Um, and when they finish a, a show, they will they will mark it off their, their, their to be watched list. So you can use bullet journals in lots of different ways. Um, you know, people will keep track of like new recipes that 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 they're they've tried out and what they thought of them. And um, so, if you can think of a way to use your bullet journal, um, you can you 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 can make it work. Um, so, I I find the bullet journal is just a very easy way for me to keep track of everything that's going on, and. It is different because, you know, like I said before, it gives you that, that, that room to expand and make it whatever it is you need it to be. And um, it, it's funny because I might go three months and not do anything but, you know, weekly spreads where I just, everything is fine. And then suddenly I need three pages of planning for a big project that's coming. And it looks like there's another question. Uh, this is the only calendar I keep. I, um, I, uh, I, I did consult my, the calendar on my phone when I was making my, my, um, my monthly calendars just to make sure I had the right number of days and I didn't get off track anywhere because it's really easy when you're writing these out by hand to skip a day or <laughs> to write an extra day in the month somehow, like you end up with 226s, I don't know. I So I would I consulted the calendar on my phone just to draw these, but no, I don't keep another calendar, I only keep my bullet journal. Yeah, another question. Do you have a symbol for done with this page or list? Do you cross it off or how do you locate your tracking list? Just flip through, thank you. Um, the question was, uh, do I have a key or a symbol for keeping track of, um, what was that? Uh, things that I'm done with? Yeah, things you're done with. Uh, and how do you locate your tracking list? If you have a table yeah. tracker, you do a table tracker. A lot of bullet journals do come with pages in the front for an index, um, where you can write down what page your packing list is on, or um, where, you know, where your, your list is that you're keeping track of. I have found that I don't use, I, I started out trying to fill in the index that, that my first couple of bullet journals came with. Um, I never kept up with it. I, I was very bad at filling them out and never using it because usually for me, the first few the first section in the front is what I go back to. These are the pages that I revisit. And then as I'm going forward, um, I'm usually, if there's something on this week that I didn't finish, or a, a task that I didn't finish, it gets assigned to the next week. It's on my to-do list for the next week. So that task moves with me until I finish it. Um, so it just keeps, <laughs> you know, do your taxes, do your taxes, do your taxes. I think that one followed me for like six weeks before I finally sat down and did my taxes. But I just kept writing it down as one of my to-dos. Um, so 
I did it. I knew, I knew it was there, it was on my mind that I needed to get that done. Um, I did watch one bullet journal author who said, you should never move a, a task more than three times. Either you don't need to do it, or you need to sit down and get it done. Um, <laughs> I like that idea because it, it's one of those, yes, if it's that important, I need to sit down and do it. Or if it's not that important, maybe I throw it on my, my log for next month. Be like, you know, I don't have time for it in January. I will, I will worry about that in February. So I throw it on my February log as a task to do, and then I don't keep migrating it. And when I get to February, I, you know, I do it then. Um, but for me, I, you know, I'm, I'm moving the task that I need to continue. I do revisit these pages in the front because these pages in the front are where I'm keeping track of some things. Um, so I revisit these pages and then I just keep going. So when I created that packing list, I created it this, like I was in this week, I turned the page, I had the packing list, and then I traveled this week. So the packing list was right where I needed it to be because um, I didn't, I, I'm not a future planner. I don't, <laughs> I don't do things way in advance. So I was, as I was getting ready for my trip, I made my packing list and then I traveled. So um, that's just how, how it worked for me. And then once I was done with that trip, I didn't need to refer back to it. So I, I don't keep track of the index. There are people who do, um, and, but like I said, there are pages in the front of my, my bullet journal that I will revisit. Like, um, I, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll just show you what I keep track of. In my bullet journal, <clears throat> I kind of like to start off with a pretty page where I've got a, a nice quote or something, something's happening there. Um, this just says, you were made of stardust and wishes and magical things. Just kind of a happy thought for the, for the start of the year. And then I have my goals for the year. And this is one of those pages that I'll revisit. And when I, and just to remind myself, you know, what the goals are, what it is I'm working towards. And I will mark when I accomplish one of those goals. And that is always a very, very happy day. Um, I also keep a wish list and I divide it in half. So the things that I want to get that, you know, I want a smartwatch. Am I going to get one? I don't know. Um, but I'm thinking about it. And then I really, really need to get prescription sunglasses. My, my pair is a little out of date. I want a new pair of prescription sunglasses. I put that in the want category. Um, and so I can plan for that purchase. Um, I also keep a waiting on list. This is for things that I have ordered online and that are going to be shipped to me. Um, I ordered myself some number stamps for my bullet journal. I'm waiting for those to come. So I will write down like where they're coming from, how they're coming, the date that they're expected to be here. And then I check off when they get here. Um, and if they don't come, I know where to go to track them down. Um, and then I have a, a reading log this is one that I will refer back to again and again and again. Um, in the past, I've kept reading logs in different books besides my bullet journal. Um, I found that I didn't always have that book with me, so that was annoying because I needed to write down the book that I had finished so I could turn it back into the library. I made myself a very large reading log because I read a lot. Um, and then I created a a spread for book recommendations because people are always recommending books to me and I want to be able to keep track of those. Is there another question? Um, yeah, this is kind of related to the last question. Yeah. And then there's a question that's going along with where you're headed now, but um, how do you know where to start the next month's schedule? <laughs> I, I cheat. And like I said, I, I put all of, I like, I like the calendar feel. I put all of my calendars in the beginning of the book. And then, um, so there's January, there's February, and then I've got like a few more pages of other stuff. And then when I, 
was at the end of all that other stuff, this is where my January spread starts. So all of the next few pages are going to be January stuff. These are gonna be my January health trackers, my January, the things that I'm tracking in January, um, and then my January weekly logs. And then my calendar for February is back in the front of the book. So I don't redraw my calendars every month. Um, it's just, I keep it one calendar in the front of the book. Some people have the very simple future logs in the front of the book and then when the new month starts, they draw the calendar. I, I don't do that. I'm like, I'm only putting the, the effort into drawing this one time. So, um, but that's why they have the very simple future logs. I've got too much going on um, and I don't, I need, to, I need to think in a calendar view. So I draw my calendars first. I don't, I do this very differently than other people do it. Um, and I'm probably not explaining that well. <laughs> um, like, writer Carol, in the front of his book, let me see if I've got a picture of it. Bookmarked off a couple of his pictures. Um, this is very, very small, but it's just, he divides his page into thirds and writes in the January, February, March, April, May, June. So in a two page, he keeps track of six months worth of stuff. That doesn't work for me. He doesn't draw calendars and he just will write the appointment in that square. Like that does not work for me. I need a calendar view. So he just does that simple, divide the page into thirds. That doesn't work for me. I need a calendar view. So instead of that simple, just, name of the month, I actually draw myself a calendar. So when I get to, to this poor part of the page, part of the month, um, I'm doing the more detailed information, but my calendar is all the way back here. One of the things that I like is this journal comes with these two ribbons. I keep one ribbon where the current calendar month is and one ribbon where my current week is, so I can get to these two sections that I use most very quickly. Um, that is one of the benefits of buying a journal that's kind of designed for bullet journaling, is it allows you to, it, it's got those uh, bookmarks that allow you to flip back and forth, um, but you can add bookmarks to any, any, any book you own, so you don't have to buy a special uh, bullet journaling journal to do that. Another question. Um, two more. Uh, can you show us your system for keeping a shopping list? Yes. That was actually the next page. Um, I had my book of recommendations, and then my next page was my shopping list. I, a lot of people will, you know, they use their bullet journaling for their, you know, they'll make their lists in there. I don't like to waste the space um, f in my bullet journal for shopping list because I feel like if I wrote down milk 27 times, it was, it, you know, it's just a waste of space for me. So I create um, in my bullet journal this shopping list page. And I, at the, on the edge of the paper, I put washi tape so it's easy for me to find as I'm flipping through and I can get to this page quickly. And then on this page, I will keep a couple pieces of uh, post-it notes on, on this page. And um, I'll write down, oh, on my way home today, I gotta get milk and cat litter from the grocery store. And then like on this one, it might be the thing that like the department store that I'm gonna go to on the weekend uh, where I gotta get like, you know, hairspray and all that stuff. I'll keep that other list here, but like the quick in and out store that I'm gonna run to, you know, I'm gonna drop, run in Dollar General and get bread on the way home. I'll put that on one of my post-it notes. I take the post-it note into the store with me and then put a new post-it note in my book so that I don't, uh, I just keep reusing this page um, for my shopping lists. And it's, like I said, I put washi tape on the edge of the page so that when I'm here in the front, I can find the page very quickly because it is one that I refer back to a lot. So that's another, um, uh, thing 
thing that I like to do. And I, that's one of those pages in the front of my book. In addition to, I've shown you my calendars a few times. Um, I like to keep track of like my bills. This, this spread isn't done, um, but it's just one of those, ooh, did I remember to pay that bill? It's, <laughs> you know, you have that thought like in the middle of the day and you're just like, oh, I don't know. But I've got it jotted down in my notebook and just a simple check mark. Yep, you paid that one. You don't have to worry about it now. Um, it, it's one of those things. I've got a couple more spreads here that I'm still working on. So I left myself a couple blank pages before I started January. Um, but I've got plans for those pages. They just, they just aren't done yet. So, and then a lot of times when I start a month, I like to have a pretty picture and sometimes a quote. And it's just a way for me to be, you know, start fresh in the new month with, with new plans and new ideas. Any other questions? Um, there was another one that you mostly already answered it. Um, uh, but the, uh, another part, do you ever paste a calendar on a page or do you always draw them in? Um, I do sometimes paste calendars in the page. I tend to draw them in, but sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, um, there have been, <sighs> there are some like bullet journalers who make stickers available for you. And there, have, there are some who will, like you can buy pre-made calendars. Um, I have not done that for the big calendar month. Um, although I have seen people do it and that is perfectly fine. I will occasionally use these pre-made little calendars for like tracking. Um, so I am, cannot remember to take my medication in the evening. So I've got a little tracker and it's like, oh, did I, did I take it? And I put a little dot there to be like, yeah, I took it last night. So I don't have to worry about it. And um, right now my dog's on medication and I can't remember if I've given him his medication for the day. So I've got a little tracker in there to keep um, keep me on track with that. And it's a little calendar that I use just so I can mark the days where he got his medication so I can be sure that I did it. Um, so I will sometimes use little calendars for that, but there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, trimming another calendar from like a little notebook or something and putting that in your I am all for the cheats man I love whatever makes life simpler and easier um and that for me is like one of the reasons that I love stickers they're fabulous but um I don't know I just get satisfaction out of drawing calendars it's one of those things that I don't know I enjoy doing I'm a weirdo I'll admit it so <laughs> and you know just decorating them I enjoy it so it doesn't bother me to sit and draw the calendar. Any other questions? Nope. All right. So yeah, um, I, There's one, oh. com one comment that you make it look so easy. <laughs> you know what? It's really not hard. And um, you know what? If you look at this page, I've got some stickers on here, but all I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I drew nine straight lines. That is all I did. And then I slapped a couple stickers on there and I'm ready to go for my week. You do not have to put a lot of effort into making your bullet journal. I mean, I think this looks adorable. I love this color scheme and I got it from the stickers that I bought, but I drew nine straight lines. It's not hard. It doesn't have to be, but it can still be cute and very easy. Uh, do you draw or paint the pictures on your page? I cannot draw. I cannot draw to save my life. Um, I usually use stickers. Um, sometimes I use markers. Um, a lot of times I, I don't do anything special to my to my bullet journal. I've got some this is a pretty artsy artsy one. Um, there are oh here's one. I did nothing here but marker. And I think I like the way this one works uh, looks. You know I've just got a couple straight lines and and marker. There's nothing 
There's nothing on here except a couple of gray lines and some black pen. And it looks very neat and clean and very organized. Um, and then other months, I am all about the stickers and I will, I'll do different weekly layouts just to keep it interesting. Um, like I'll do each of my days of the week and then the weekend and then I'll give myself boxes for the things that I have to do. And sometimes I'll have a box for like next week because next week hasn't been drawn yet, but there are things that pop up. They're like, oh, I need to remember to do that next week. So a lot of times I'll have myself a little square for my next week tasks. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, I, I, I tend to, you know, I use my ruler a lot and um, I, draw, I draw rectangles. It's all about the rectangle for me. <laughs> um, one thing I, I do, would recommend if, you, if you're using a dot grid notebook, um, this page looks very confusing. It's um, a grid spacing guide. And if you go to YouTube and bullet journal and type in bullet journal grid spacing, you'll find where lots of different people have, have done this and explain it um, probably better than I will. But all I do is I count the number of squares that I have like up and down the page. So this has, and then I do the math to figure out where, if I want to divide the page in half, where that would be. If I want to divide the page in thirds, where that would be. And if I want to divide the page into fourths, where that would be. So I can turn back to this page where I've done this. And then over here, I, I jot down a little cheat sheet so that I know if I wanted to divide this page into quarters, I would count seven across and 10 down. And that's, that's how I would, I do this in advance so that when I get to these pages, I don't have to do that math every time. It's already done for me and I can very quickly um, pull out my ruler, start counting my dots and throw down some lines. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. You can make like this is just literally seven rectangles. That's all this is, and yet it looks adorable. I, you know, pull out a couple markers, make some rectangles, and throw on a couple stickers, and that's it. Um, yeah. Yes? Can you go back and highlight some of the areas you used washi tape? I'm asking, someone's asking for examples of how you use washi tape. I use washi tape a lot. Um, this book? Um, I've got washi tape along the bottom just as a decorative on the page. Um, I Where's February? I mean, in February, um, I did some washi tape as decorative lines there, but and across there, but also, like on this page, I did what's called a Dutch door, and that's where you kind of cut your page in half. Sometimes, sometimes I do it vertically, sometimes I do it horizontally. When I do that, I like to put washi tape along the edge just to reinforce that edge that has been cut. Um, you don't have to by any stretch of the imagination, but I like to. So, you know, this part of the week is February and that part of the week is March, so they got different colored washi tapes. And I thought that was very cute, but again, not necessary. For me, mostly the washi tape is just a decorative um, element to, to the spread. Uh, a border along the top or the bottom of the page or reinforcement along the edge. Um, and this month I, I used washi tape actually as the divider line between the days. I just threw down a different, I, had, I have so many pink washi tapes that I just decided this month I was gonna use all of them. Um, so my task list, I got a decorative along the edge and then washi tape in between the days, um, along the edge. Yeah. I use washi tape everywhere. Um, and washi tape is great because most of the time it's, it's paper tape and it's got a very, it's sticky, but it's not like super sticky so you can reposition it. Um, 
I also will sometimes use washi tape when I'm trying to get a very straight line with my marker. I'll lay the washi tape down so that I can um, uh, spread the marker and um, get a very crisp line. But And then I'll peel the washi tape up and I've got the, the marker line and that, that's all. So, but yeah. And then this, this spread, again, super simple. I didn't even draw straight lines. I just was like dotted lines across the page, divided the week into seven, and used a bit of washi tape here along the side to create a division so I could put in a to-do list. Um, any other questions people have at this point? Okay, so if you picked up one of the kits from the library, it was just um, a composition notebook because like I said, any notebook will do, um, and a sample of washi tape. So you might try using that washi tape a couple different ways. It's not a lot, it's just a little bit to get you started. Um, but, but yeah, I would love uh, for you to share pictures of what you do. Um, you can share them in the comments below if you, if you do any uh, bullet journaling this week uh, or any time and uh, you want to share those images, I would love to see them. And yeah, I'm here if you've got any questions. I do um, think, uh, are you going to be posting this on YouTube? We're going to be posting this video on YouTube, so if you wanted to go back and hear all of this again, um, you can do that. And uh, if you have any questions, you can post them there and I will check um, the next couple of days and answer any questions you have and I'll check this this post again later tonight and a couple times throughout this week to see if there are any other questions so if you've got any anything you need clarification on I'm happy to help um, but again if you're looking for more inspiration YouTube is a wonderful place to get bullet journal ideas Instagram fabulous there are beautiful pictures of bullet journals Pinterest is a great place to get ideas. And again, books at the library here. We've got a couple you can put holds on and check out. Uh, we'll bring them to your curbside because the library is closed right now. But yeah, um, if this is something that you do and that you like, I'd love to hear your ideas about it. And if you ever want to talk bullet journals, I'm Leah and you can give me a call. Okay. Um, any other questions before we go? Mention Zoom. Zoom. Oh, Zoom! Yes! Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the date. January 28th. I've got it in my bullet journal. Um, we are going to be starting a bullet journal club uh, or a Bujo club. B-U-J-O. A lot of bullet journalers abbreviate bullet journal to Bujo. Um, so that's another thing you can search when you go to Pinterest or uh, YouTube or Instagram. Uh, we're going to start a, a little club. We're going to meet at, on Zoom at the end of the month. So you'll have to register for that program on the library website, and we will email you a link to the meeting. Um, but we're going to have a meeting at the end of the month where we can talk about, you know, problems we've had with our bullet journal or ideas that we have that we want to share. And we could just come together and, um, you know, show each other our bullet journals and talk about what we're going to do for the following month and what plans we have for our bullet journals or cute layout ideas that we want to share with people that, that we have found really helpful or that we like. Um, yeah, so we're going to do that. It's going to be January 28th at 6.30. Um, register on the library website. Is that program already up, Mary? It's not up yet. Check back tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll get it on there. So register for that program. And like I said, we will email you the link to the Zoom meeting and you can join us and yeah, you can bullet journal with us. I'm looking forward to, to bullet journaling with you. So thanks. Have a great night, everyone.